Hello friends! Welcome to my channel, or back to my channel as the case may be. Today the story I'd like to share is that of Orpheus and Eurydice. Orpheus is a Greek poet hero, uh, bard you could say, and this is the tale of him venturing into the underworld to recover his wife's spirit after she has died. As is typical with many of these myths, there are multiple versions. This one is from Greece. The other most common version you can find is that from the Romans. But before them, there were also alternate variations of this myth. And as I've done a bit more research, I keep finding more and more versions of it, including from a variety of Native American tribes, several from South America, and just kind of scattered around. Because this is a very common theme in mythology of how to cope with loss, and specifically trying to overcome death. So, let's get into it. In the kingdom of Thrace, there was once a singer named Orpheus. His father Apollo had gifted him a lyre. And with it, he was able to charm wild beasts that they would become tame, bend the trees to his will, and enchant the ears of mortals. Many maidens loved Orpheus, for in addition to his music, he was fair of appearance, having been blessed with his father's good looks. But while many maidens loved him, he had eyes for only one, Eurydice. Soon, they were married. But much to his horror, during the wedding feast, a serpent bit her on the ankle, and she promptly died. Who can describe the grief of Orpheus? He wept and lamented all day and all night, but the tears brought no ease to his grief. Instead of growing lighter as he wept, his heart grew heavier, dragging him down. Feeling that there was no other option, he resolved to go speak to Hades, god of the underworld, and beg for the return of his wife. Knowing the ancient tales, Orpheus knew where to find the river Styx. There was a cavern which led deep into the earth, and so he made his way there with his lyre and his heavy heart, making his way down the treacherous path. He found the river Styx and the ferryman, Charon. He begged and pleaded, Charon, take me across. But Charon replied, my boat is for the dead. You are too heavy. But when Orpheus struck his lyre and sang of his grief, Charon relented. His next challenge was the guardian of the gate, Cerebus. As he approached, Cerebus raised his three heads, growling and snarling, but Orpheus was not deterred. Again, he pulled up his lyre and sang, soothing the heart of Cerebus, who allowed him to pass. So the poet entered the land of the dead, passing by the shades of heroes and villains alike until he came before the throne of Hades and Persephone, the Lord and Lady of the Dead. He bowed low with utmost respect before plucking at his lyre and singing, O lords of the underworld, I do not come here to spy out the secrets of your kingdom. I come to seek my wife, cut off in her bloom, when she trod on a serpent and it poured poison into her veins. I have tried to endure my grief, but I cannot. Love is too much for me. I have tried to endure this grief. Love led me here. Love, a God well known to those of us upon the earth. A God known to you as well. For you too, O King and Queen of the dead, were brought together by love. I implore you, by these haunts of terror, by these realms of silence, make whole again the thread of Eurydice's life. All of us mortals must descend at last, for this is our final home, 
and yours is the most lasting sway. My wife, like all who rest, will come back to you. But until then, I implore you, grant her to me. Or if you will not, allow me to stay here with her. I do not wish to return alone. Triumph in my death as well as hers. He sang and sang, poured his whole heart and soul into his song. The shades of the dead stopped and listened. The Furies paused in their tortures and shed tears of grief, overcome by his emotion. Persephone herself shed tears, as did Hades, the lord of the underworld. Let Eurydice be called. Eurydice, Eurydice sounded through the halls of the dead, and out of the depths where the newly found shades congregated. Her spirit stepped forth, walking slowly, limping due to her injured foot. She stood sadly before the throne, not knowing why she was called, until she spied Orpheus, at which point her face split with the greatest of smiles, shone brightly with a joy never before seen in the realms of the dead. Take her, Hades instructed, but be aware you cannot help her climb. You must not look upon her face until you return to the mortal world. For if you do, she will return to the land of the dead, and you will see her no longer. So they began their long trek. Orpheus stepping surely, confident in their love. Eurydice following behind slowly with shuffling steps. Soon they came to Cerebus, who softly growled but permitted them to leave. Orpheus was confident hearing her steps behind, but they were slowing, faltering. Soon he came to Charon's shores on the river Styx. Following the Lord of the Dead's instructions, he allowed them both passage across the river, where they resumed their climb out of the underworld. But the path was treacherous and long. Step by step, they climbed closer to the sun, the land of the mortals, but step by step, Eurydice's steps were slower, more labored. As they neared the entrance, it appeared to Orpheus he could no longer hear her steps, and in a panic he turned to help her, only to watch her disappear back into the depths of the underworld. No, my love, he cried, but he had not followed the instructions of Hades, Lord of the Dead. For a long time he stood there, near the mouth of the cave, staring into the darkness of the underworld, until with heavy heart he turned back to the living. I hope you enjoyed this story. It is one of the... it's one of the tales when I was younger I didn't really understand. But now that I am older and have experienced loss, both of a romantic sense and also of just family members, I have a little more empathy for Orpheus, a little more understanding of why myths like this persist in so many cultures. I've seen variations of this tale from Native American tribes. Uh, there are stories in North mythology about traveling into the kingdom of hell to uh, speak to the heroes of old, to bring them back out for final battles miss the world over, try to explore the concepts of reality. And if there's one thing that is present in everyone's life, it is both birth and death. That being said, we have reached the end of the tale. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like, comment. If you have other stories you would like me to tell, go ahead and leave suggestions in the comments for me. And until next time, walk in the light, my friends. Bye.